Ludwig von Beethoven was born in Bonn, Germany, where his father and grandfather were singers at the court of Prince Max Friedrich. The family situation was unhappy, the father being alcoholic, and at an early age, Ludwig was forced to take on the support of his mother and two younger brothers. At 11, he was assistant organist in the court chapel, and a year later, the harpsichordist in the court orchestra. A visit to Vienna at age 17 enabled him to play for Mozart. At age 22, Beethoven left home to study with Haydn in Vienna at the prince's expense. Unfortunately, the relationship between Beethoven and Papa Haydn was not happy. The elder Haydn was ruffled by young Ludwig's volcanic temperament and independent spirit. Beethoven's powers as a pianist took the music-loving Viennese aristocracy by storm. To this princely rabble, as he called them, the young genius came as a passionate rebel, forcing them to receive him as an equal and friend. It is good to move among the aristocracy, he observed, but it is first necessary to make them respect you. Beethoven once wrote to his good friend, Prince Lichnowsky, Prince, what you are, you are through the accident of birth. What I am, I am through my own efforts. There have been many princes, and there will be thousands more. But there is only one Beethoven. How right he was. But just as the young eagle was spreading his wings, fate struck in a vulnerable spot. He began to lose his hearing. Beethoven's helplessness in the face of this affliction dealt a shattering blow to his pride. Ah, how could I possibly admit an infirmity in the one sense that should have been more perfect in me than in others? a sense I once possessed in highest perfection. As his deafness closed in on him, it became the symbol of his terrible sense of isolation, of all the defiance and insecurity and hunger for love that had rent him for as long as he could remember. In 1802, he went to Heiligenstadt, a summer resort outside Vienna, where a titanic struggle shook him between his lonely depression and his desire to compose. But little more, and I would have put an end to my life. Only art it was that withheld me from suicide. Ah, it seemed impossible to leave the world until I had produced all that I felt called upon to produce. And so I endured this wretched existence. It slowly dawned on Beethoven that art must give him the happiness life withheld. Only through creation could he attain the victory threatened by deafness. His willingness to struggle asserted itself. He fought his way back to health. I am resolved to rise superior to every obstacle. With whom need I be afraid of measuring my strength? If possible, I will bid defiance to my fate. I will take fate by the throat. It shall not overcome me. He had stumbled on an idea that was to play a decisive part in 19th century thought. The concept of art as refuge art as compensation for the shortcomings of reality, art as atonement, the idealized experience, the ultimate victory over life. Having conquered the chaos within himself, he came to believe that mankind also could conquer chaos through art. This became the epic theme of his music, the progression from despair to conflict, from conflict to serenity, from serenity to triumph and joy. The revelation that had come to him through suffering was a welcome message to a world that was also struggling to be born. The concept of man as master of his fate resonated with the new middle class. Beethoven said what his generation needed to hear. He became the prophet of the 19th century, the architect of its heroic vision of life. I am the Bacchus who presses out the glorious wine for mankind. Whoever truly understands my music is freed thereby from the miseries that others carry about in them. I believe that Beethoven's epic struggle against fate, his search for joy and serenity through art, is essayed quite deliberately in his Ninth Symphony. If we approach his last symphony from this viewpoint, it helps us understand the music and answers some of the mysteries and questions about its construction, form, and use of chorus. And we look at a few slides now. Uh, the first one that we've been looking at is from 1802, uh, from a miniature by Christian Hornemann. And this would have been just exactly at the time period when Beethoven went out to Heiligenstadt and wrote the testimony and contemplated suicide. The next slide is from a sketch by Johann Theodor Leiser, a violinist. 
And uh, this was in 1815, about the time that Beethoven is sketching out and working on the Ninth Symphony. And we can see there the, uh, the look as we see him strolling down the city streets, and people would have taken that he was unfriendly or that he was working out ideas in his head. We now realize that he was deaf and he was, he was afraid anybody finding out that he was deaf. So if somebody came up to the street to engage him in conversation, to say how they liked something or didn't like something, he of course would hurry off the other way because he could not hear what they were saying. And, and, and at this young stage in his life, it would have been impossible for him to have a career if people thought, here's a composer that has not heard what he has done. So it was very important for this, this charade to go on that he was fine. Uh, out of that, though, an interesting thing is because his closest friends, of course, knew that he was deaf, we have what are called conversation books. And these are one-sided conversations of Beethoven in which the, uh, his friend would write down what he was saying. So we never hear what Beethoven actually said in these things, but we get the other side of the conversation. And all of them have, of course, been saved. So it's a great way to know what was going on in the mind of Beethoven and in how people received his work at the time. The next slide is from 1823, a sketch by Josef Bohm. And um, here we again see the same thing. Beethoven, he catches the idea that he is holding a manuscript page behind him as he's strolling along thinking. And he, he really did work out his ideas in great detail. And he was not a talkative person. Um, and so this would have been about the time that he had finished the, uh, the Ninth Symphony and was just arranging details. And we can see what he looked at at that time. The last slide is a death mask made by Joseph Donhauser in 1827. The next slide again recaps what the, uh, the idealized version of art in the 19th century coming out of Beethoven's thoughts and the process that he went through at Heiligenstadt. And it's, a, it's an idea that carried through and we have Beethoven as this new artist, the, the vision of the lonely artist locked away in the atelier who is suffering to create, whether it be a painting, a book, music, studying, working on their technique, and someone that gives up many things in order to give their gift of their art to society, and that these tend to be lonely people that don't get along easily in society. All of this is an ideal that has come out of this, and you see the, the ideas of what, what art is that we still carry with us today, and the idea that going into a concert hall is, uh, at that time, the great church of art as opposed to organized religious churches.